My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to America. Other people want to make friends is trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Technology is the lifeblood of this stock market. And right now, in a totally new paradigm, one that must be put in context, it doesn't matter what your technology does. It only matters who uses it. Who's the customer? That's what I keep thinking after today. I've got another sedate session. Dow slipped two points. That's going to be inched up 0.08%. NASDAQ declined 0.04%. These, I need a microscope here. We keep learning this same lesson about technology over and over and over again in this elongated earnings season. And it's pretty jarring because normally we care about what technology what it actually does. If it's helpful, if it increases speed or accuracy or power or productivity, well, it tends to be a success. Bye, bye, bye. If it's clunky and a big waste and it tends to uh, be dead on arrival, sell, sell, sell. Not these days, though. These days, Wall Street only cares about who your customers are. Good, bad, as long as you've got the right end markets, your stock is going to be rewarded. So let's start with two relatively big household names. First, let's use Roku, okay, and Cisco. Roku sells to the consumer, sells to you. Their technology helps you stream videos directly to your TV. Cisco is a networking company, a colossus that sells to the what known, is known as the enterprise, giant complex companies that need to connect to the web in all its iterations. Now, Roku stock, I mean, it has been just a consummate horse. Just an amazing runner. Up in an astronomical 385% for the year. You heard me, 385%. Why? Because every time you hear about a new video package, you need to think of Roku. Because its technology is the easiest way to connect. Their devices are neutral. They work with any platform. And they're also installing their tech directly into new TVs. So when Disney has the single most successful launch for a streaming service in history, you buy Roku. In fact, if you go to Roku's website today, the welcome page is Stream Disney Plus on your Roku device. It's the leading way to watch all of these services. A classic arms dealer that allows the consumer to get every channel she wants. When you consider it that way, in that light, it's easy to see why the stock's had such an epic run and why it might have even more upside. No wonder it rallied more than 4% today on the heels of that big Disney launch. But now let's go to the other extreme. Cisco. You don't hire Cisco to install Sonos in your home. You hire them when you want to connect your far-flung enterprise to the web and guard it with the best security there is. Now, when the company reported last night, management gave downbeat guidance. So downbeat that the stock got clobbered, uh, plummeted 7% today. Listen to what the straight-shooting CEO, Chuck Robbins, he can't help himself, he's that straight a shooter, had to say about the world in his conference call. Over the last year, many of you have heard me talk about the resilience of the global macro environment. However... On our last earnings call, we indicated that we had begun to see some weakness. He goes on to say that weakness continued throughout Q1 and was more broad-based. While the main challenges continue to be the service provider in emerging markets, this quarter we also saw relative weakness in enterprise and commercial. Hmm, enterprise and commercial. Well, that's pretty much everything. Cisco's total production orders were actually down 4%. Both the Americas and the Europe, Middle East, Africa region down 3%. Asia, Pacific, China, Japan are 5%. Emerging markets got hammered down 13%. Those are staggering declines for this great company. Or really, for any company, for that matter. What's driving this downturn? Take a listen. Business confidence, CEO confidence. Uh, has been waning, and it's really been waning because of all the uncertainty, whether it's the U.S.-China trade situation, the Hong Kong situation, Brexit, what's going on in Washington. I mean, there's just there's a lot of uncertainty. So all we're saying is that we aren't modeling any change in the momentum, but certainly if we get a resolution in U.S.-China, even an interim deal, that could potentially help. Well, there you go. I mean, no wonder the stock got obliterated today. Now, there's real value here if you can wait, but Wait, you must to get those gains now. How about the semiconductors? Once again, it's all about end markets. When you look at the incredibly consumer-oriented chipmaker like AMD, its stock's been soaring. You know I'm a big fan of AMD's CEO, Lisa Su. 
When she reported that last quarter, the stock surged to the low 30s, went to the low 30s, and then boom, all the way up to 38. Why? Red hot PC and gaming market, uh, robust data center for them. And that's why I think you can keep screaming higher. I mean, the stock hit 38 today. On the other hand, Texas Instruments has a business that's heavily skewed toward the enterprise, especially the Internet of Things autos. Something uh, that, like, it just can't outperform on a day like today. Too much weakness in the industrial economy. For the longest time, this market loved enterprise-oriented tech stocks. Investors believe they could keep working even in a tougher economy because their customers needed to upgrade in order to stay competitive. That is no longer the case. Whether it is some of the things that Chuck mentioned in Brexit, in Hong Kong, China, worldwide slowdown, these stocks, what they've done, they've effectively turned into market punching bags. Right now, the whole tech sector feels fraught because of the widely varying confidence of the customer. Next week is Dreamforce. It's the Salesforce hosted extravaganza that showcases the best of the software as a service industry, as well as some well known luminaries. I don't know, you know, ex president, CEO of the largest company in the world. You get the picture. Now, you know, I'm a huge believer in the cloud. Big companies use Salesforce to improve service and build trust with their customers. So they keep hiring Salesforce in the event of a, slow, a worldwide slowdown. Or do they? Same goes for ServiceNow, Adobe, Workday. These cloud plays actually save their customers money through digitization, which is why I think they'll hold up just fine. That's why I think Salesforce is still a buy, even though it's running into Dreamforce. But you know what? Now I'm worried. I am a little worried about Workday. That last quarter, they had trouble closing deals. Same, same rhetoric I heard on the Cisco call. It's not good. So then you've got what I call the hybrids. HP Inc. is under assault by Carl Icahn. He wants them to merge with Xerox. We all know HP is a big consumer brand, but it's got some gigantic corporate orders. And th- those orders can easily be cut back. You can just delay them. Uh, uh, that's what we saw with Cisco. If it weren't for the takeover talk, I think the stock would be dramatically lower. Micron's a bit of a hybrid, too. When we spoke to CEO Sanjay Marotra, he said a lot of good things about demand for storage and consumer products. His chips are the backbones of all sorts of devices, cameras, phones, that kind of thing. But Micron also has large enterprise orders, so it's tough. That's why the stock's in no man's land. Finally, you have Apple, which is unique. While Apple is some enterprise work, it's really a classic consumer product play in an environment where the consumer is king. And that's why Apple stock has been able to roar. Uh, It's up 66% for the year. This is strictly a know-your-customers market. The bottom line, until we deal with this macro uncertainty, stocks like Cisco and its colleagues could be stuck in neutral at best or have some more down days or weeks at worst. The market wants nothing to do with tech companies that serve the enterprise. Oh, but does it love the consumer? And that is the end of the story. Jeff in Massachusetts. Jeff. Hey, Jim. I'd like to give a shout out to Stephen and Sarah, my kids, asking you in regards to Canopy Growth Corporation. It's plummeted. I've owned it for a long time. What do you think? Should I hold or sell? That, that was a terrible quarter. I mean, I, I, there's no two. I can't miss words. I mean, it's just a terrible quarter. I, they literally have to hope that the government plows over the, the cannabis crop up in Canada because there's just way too much. Uh, it is just I think I don't want to say it's no, it's terrible. That industry's terrible. It, you know, it, it, the eyes were too big. That's what my mom would have said. Tom in Illinois, please. Tom. Hey, Jim. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. Um, I- I'd like to know, what do you think about the Fox A shares at this point, now that it's uh, out on its own? Do you think it's a buy here? No, I'd rather have you own Disney. I mean, Disney's going to go much, 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 much higher. Let's, let's, let's not fool around. Uh, I need to go to Alex in New York. Alex. Alex, you're up. Jim, with Arrowhead Pharmaceutical stock reaching a new 52-week high, is it still a buy at these levels? I don't know. We've been saying forward? buy it, buy it, buy it. I'm not going to turn my head on now, man. I think it's just really good. I really like it. Um, and maybe, um, well, you know what? That's really about it. So it, it's all about the end markets here. With so much global uncertainty present, be prepared to see continued weakness in enterprise-oriented stocks like Cisco and Texas Instruments. And yes, because Warren Buffett sold a small amount of Apple, you're going to see that consumer stock go down a bit. If you sell it because of that, I say don't trade it, okay? Oh, man, money time. All eyes on Viacom as the company reports earnings. What should be your next move now that it's joining forces with CBS? I've got the CEO. Then why Trump may be even more anti-elite than Elizabeth Warren. I'll explain. And cutting-edge drug science is making us healthier, and companies like Biomarin are finally pushing medicine forward, and their stocks are starting to go up. I'm sitting down with the CEO to find out what's ahead. So stay with Kramer.
Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.